Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today is Sunday, July the 7th, 2024. Still the 4th of July weekend. Yeah, somebody had a good old time on the 4th, I'm sure. No idea, God. I want to just jump on in, if you don't mind, to our lesson today. And uh, I know you're sitting beside somebody. I hope they look friendly. Don't you look at them, look them square in the eye. Look, look at your neighbor, look them dead in the face. I don't care if you don't like what you said. Look him in the face. I'm on my way. I'm not going to say nothing. You look at him. Look at him. Say, say, why are you so salty? Why are you so salty? And look at your other neighbor. Somebody on the other side. Look at you say, hey, why are you so salty? Why are you so salty, man? You know, we live in the day, 2024, it's salty people everywhere. And you gave them a telephone with, with Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. And they be on there just going ham in their feelings, mad about stuff, blaming other folks for their problems, always complaining. Man, it's salt everywhere. Heard a new name twin said, shake it like a salt shaker. But before I get too deep into the message, I'm so glad you asked your neighbor that. So I want you to think about why are you so salty? Because somebody asked you. You asked somebody. But somebody also asked you. Is y'all talking the same thing? Salt has been used by humans for thousands of years. From food preservation to seasoning. Salt's Ability to preserve food was a founding contributor to the development of civilization. It helped eliminate dependence on seasonal availability of food and made it possible to transport food over large distances. Before refrigerators, they used salt. I'm old enough to remember we told in the country they would kill the hogs or whatever and slaughter the animals, and after they slaughtered the animals, they would salt them, pack them with salt, they put them out there in the storehouse. But the salt was preserved there. But you had to boil the salt out of it before you could eat it because it was too salty to eat at that moment, but it was preserved. That was, that was how they could eat certain foods in different seasons and they could transport food. You may kill it in the woods and got to trek back to the house. You got to season it with the salt, pack it with the salt and preserve it, then bring it home. But why are you so salty? Hmm. Y'all ever seen Big Mama cook in the kitchen before they had measuring cups? They had salt shakers and nothing. They just they had the pot going. She'd be in the kitchen and it's smoking and steaming and pot can and she'd stir it up a little bit, put the little spoon in. They said, nope, need a little more salt. She wouldn't get a measuring cup or one of them spoons. You know, put some, she just grab the salt, put a bit in her hand, sprinkle it. And just, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's enough. She could taste it and tell when we had enough salt because nobody want to eat food that's too salty. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you ever had some food that was too salty? Yeah. You're like, I can't eat this because it's too salty. You wonder why folks can't stay in here. I'm just saying, because maybe you just, maybe you just too salty. And we got to figure out what got you there. So today I want to unpack, so make somebody mad. Today I'm going to unpack why you are so salty. But once you can understand, maybe you can begin to change something, right? A lot of times we don't want to sit down and have a self-evaluation to understand why everybody thinks we crazy. You know, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, maybe, maybe it ain't them. <laughs> maybe it is you. Me. No, I'm good. Maybe it's you. I'll play everybody else on me. Man, them folks, no, maybe, maybe you just, you know, you got some issues. We got to work through them. We're going to walk this back, praise the Lord. I want to tell you a story. Well, read a scripture. Go through a story we've known about. You ever heard of Sodom and Gomorrah? Yeah. And, and, the, and the town of Sodom was destroyed by God. I'll give you a quick lesson why. So Lot. Lot was sent with Abram. God told Abram, leave his family and walk. And everywhere you walk, it's going to be yours. I'm going to make you a king and, and the, a father of many nations. And with him was his nephew, Lot. So Abram leaves and Lot leaves with him. They leave everything behind. 
They get to a field and they get to a point where they have too many people and Abram and Lot split. He's not Abraham yet, he's still Abram. Abram and Lot split. So Lot split and takes his stand with him. Lot gets to the place called Sodom. And in Sodom, Lot is at the gate and angels come. To, he greets them and being hospitable, he offers them bed in his home. That's what they did. Like, we got southern hospitality. They had hospitality over there as well. So when a person would come in as a stranger, you would bring them in, convince them to hang out with you and chill so you could provide hospitality. So when the angels come, like offers them some refuge, they say, no, it's warm enough outside. We will chill outside. But then Sodom, excuse me, Lot persists and convinces them to stay. They hang out with, with, with Lot there in the house posted, and all of a sudden, here come the men of the town. You ever heard the term sodomized? Sodomized, the term is derived from the word Sodom, the place where the men wanted to come in and know the angels, the men. That's where the term comes from, the unnatural act, the way God didn't intend. So God had the name, they named it because it was unintended to be used that way. So since this happens, and the men don't want to leave, Lot said, you know what? No, no, leave. Because he knows that it'll bring a curse upon his house if he doesn't protect his guests. He says, no, take my, I have some daughters that are virgins. Take them instead. And the men said, no, sir, we want the dudes. Okay. So then when they won't give them Lot, the men say, if you don't give them up, it's going to be worse for you than for them. And by this time, the, and they push on the door trying to break in. By this time, the angels get a little fed up and the angels just make them all blind. So now the men are blinded, they can't get in the house. They get tired of trying to get in the house. And when this happens, the angels tell a lot, get your wife, get your family, and leave the town. Because God is going to destroy this town. God going to destroy it. So Lot then, being a good family man, goes to his son and says, hey y'all, get your stuff and come on. But the boys don't want to listen. Pick up reading in chapter 19, verse 14 of the book of Genesis. The Bible says, And Lot went out and spake unto his sons in law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons in law. They didn't want to believe him. So you understand something, ladies and gentlemen? You can't save everybody. Your job is to give them the information. Lot was told by the angels to get your family out of the town. He goes to tell his son-in-laws to leave the town, and they don't want to listen. So I got to make a decision. Do I stay in doubt with the fools, or do I leave? We want to save everybody, but everybody can't go. When you give them the information, you have done your job. A lesson I have to wrestle with every day, because I want everybody to be straight. And I try my best to pull everybody with me. I'm pulling people that's pulling against me, but I'm too stupid to let them go. Because the role of a pastor is a little different than the role of a normal citizen. I have to hold on to folks sometimes, and I hold on to them too long, which causes me to have pain. Don't you be like me. If they don't want to listen, sometimes, you gotta let them go. Tell me why you're so soft, I'm get there in a minute. Verse 15, and, and when the morning arose, then the angels hastened like, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold of his hands, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. Lot, the, the angel said, Get your daughters, since they're going to listen, and your, and your wife, and leave. But verse 16, the Bible said, While he lingered, but see, sometimes our problem is we can't let go of the Yes. We hold on to stuff for too long. Amen. The angel told them to leave the town because the town is about to be destroyed. But it was something that held him there and he couldn't leave. He was stuck. But God had found faith. He had found favor with God and he needed to move. So instead of allowing him to be destroyed, God grabbed him with the angels and moved him and his family outside the town because he was his son. Sometimes you got to have somebody you can trust to help you come out of what you've been stuck in. 
But can't nobody help you out of something you don't want to acknowledge. And then you got to be willing to follow. Amen. See, some people have tried to leave you home, but you're stuck where you want to be. You don't want to come out of the darkness and you wonder why. You start to. You got to let some stuff go. Yes, you got to let some people go. Yes. I know it seems like it's fun when you're hanging. I was with somebody the other day at work. One of my co-workers, and she was talking because she got issues. And she was telling me how when she was younger, when she was in the street, she had, she had so much fun. I said, but well, was it really fun? See, when we associate being fun, it's generally things that cause us harm later. So was it really fun? While it seemed fun, the only reason we consider it fun is because it was risky and wrong. The risk, the rush of breaking the rule gave us an adrenaline rush which was actually fear. Yes, sir, we're on. And I asked the same So I said, so do you like spiders? He's like, no, sir. I said, so when you see a spider, what happens? I run. And I said, you know, the same emotion you get when you see the spider is the emotion you get when you live in risk. The same feeling is there. The spider makes you run because you run from the fear, but when you think it's cool, you run into the fear because you ain't got enough sense to know it ain't good for you. She brought them out, verse 17. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Look to neighbor said, Look not behind. Do it again. Look not behind. Read that again. Came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad. They outside the town. He says, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain that she be consumed. He said, don't just go a little distance. You got to get to the mountains because don't think that what the Lord is about to do to this place, you got to get far away so you can be saved. Sometimes, y'all, we move, but we don't move far enough. He said, yeah, I ain't going to hang with them no more, but the number's still in your heart. Yeah. You ain't going to fool with them no more, but you know to go where they're going to be. It ain't, we ain't cool like that no more, but you still stay cool today for you. So you can have a little access. Y'all ever seen them? You go on the stone, you go in the, in the place of business, in case of emergency, Break glass, they got an axe in there so you can even break the glass and get the water hose out. Yeah. We have a case of emergency for these. We keep them close by. So if we get rough and we want to go back, we can just break the glass and we got access to them. Instead of cutting them off, let the relationship die. I'm a country boy. You do know if you kill a snake, I don't know what Sister Bob knows this. To kill a snake, you must cut his head off. Because if you cut his tail off, what's going to happen? It's going to grow back. He ain't going to die. If you cut a snake's tail off, the snake will not die. His tail will just grow back. But if you cut his head off, the snake will die, but the body will still move for a little bit. Got to cut it off at the head, baby. Yeah. Got to let it go. Verse 18. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. Behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast shewed unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Behold, now this city is near to flee unto, and it is little one. Oh, let me escape thither. You're not a little one, and my soul shall live. He said, I know you want me to go to the mountains, but I don't want to go out there. I'm a little afraid. Can I just go to the little town instead? Because I've already found favor since you want me to make it. Don't make me go to the wilderness because something might kill me out there. Let me go to the town. And he said unto him, see, I've accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Since you want to go to a little town, we're going to let that town make it because that's where you're going to be. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. He says, go ahead and get there, because I cannot destroy 
to other places until you get to safety. The Lord protects his children. He, and some people are staying close to you because they know you are protected. But they don't want to be under the umbrella for long. They just want your cover. And you ain't understood that they don't mean you no good. They just trying to stay safe because they know you cool with God. And since you and God are straight, if something happened, they straight because they with you. We, I, I went to, went, went to, went to have a, some, 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 some dinner with my friends that come my guys that from back in the day. I'm talking about the past. Some, some guys from back in the day, right? And, and one of the guys was the muscle. And he was talking, they, they, they always talk about high school, right? He talked about how if, if, if one of the guys told him a problem was happening with one of the dudes in the school, he said, what's the problem? Who it is? I got it. And then the next day, he said, did the dude say something to you? No, he ain't said nothing to me. He said, I don't know. Because he would take care of his friends. So I mean, people would try to be friends with him because they knew he would protect them. People are trying to be close to you because you have the gift of God and the anointing, and the anointing is attractive. But you have to be careful that you don't allow folk to hold on to you that ain't trying to go where you're going. We hold on to people and hold on to things for too long. We hold on to stuff that means us no good. We hold on to things that only come to harm us. We don't have the wherewithal to let it go. And until we can get to the place we can say, I don't do that no more. I don't go there no more. They ain't cool no more. We're going to still be stuck and still. Hold on. Verse 23. I'm almost done. Do my script. I'm going to talk. Verse 23. Then the sun was risen upon the earth and Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. All of a sudden, it just starts to rain down fire and brimstone from heaven. Y'all been watching the news, I'm sure. They get forest fires happening right now in California. They, they, they spread so fast. People have to leave the town. Sometimes they don't even be able to get out because of the fire coming so fast. Can you imagine being in a situation where God told you to leave before the fire came? Then the fire does come. The first thing you want to do is what? Look back. Because you want to see what's happening. Because you know it. We all, dog. Y'all, you You know, when you're riding down the highway, it's a car on fire on the side of the street, and all of a sudden, everybody's slowing down. The car ain't even close to the road. You ask yourself, why everybody's slowing down? Because everybody knows it. They all want to see what's going on. They want to look over here, but they got to slow down so they can see it. Because we love tragedy. We, we love foolishness. We love, we love, oh my God. Somebody started bleeding here right now. Everybody going to stop there and look at the bleeding. Look at the blood. Oh my God, they bleeding. Somebody going to get their phone out and put it on Instagram. So, and he th overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the city and that which grew up on the ground. Verse 26. We all know this story. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. You wonder why are you so salty? You so salty because you keep looking back. You can't let go of stuff that happened when you were 12. You can't let go of something that happened when you were 16. You 40. How long are you going to be stuck? You cannot grow stuck. You cannot move forward stuck. I drive vehicles. And sometimes we work in the fields. And when you're rolling, it's in raining, and you run your truck into a pothole, and you get stuck. And you can put that joke in drive. And the wheels will spin, but you will not move because you are stuck. You mad because you can't move forward, but you ain't called for no help. You in the car mad, now you soft because you stuck. All you got to do is ask for some help. And then when the help come, let them help you get out the hole. But no, you don't want to move forward because it's comfortable looking back. See, when I'm looking backwards, I don't have to be responsible for my condition because it's their fault. 
My daddy wasn't in the house with me. So since my daddy wasn't there, I'm 50. Now I'm mad because my... You didn't tell me since my daddy wasn't there when I was growing up. From 1974 when I was born, I became 18 in 1992. In 1992, that became I was an adult. Right? I mean, I can go to j jail. <laughs> I'm grown. So, so I'm still going to be mad in 2024. Because my daddy wasn't there in 1974. It don't make no sense. And everything happening to me now is his fault. Oh, hell, oh, hell no. Now, 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 what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, yes, my father wasn't there in 1974. But I have children now in 2024, and guess what? I'm going to be there. I might not know how to do it. I may not have instructions on what to do, but I bet you when they look for me, I'm going to be in the house. Because my dad wasn't, I will. It's not a reason to not do. And then we live in the information age, man. Anything you want to find, you can look up on Facebook, YouTube. You can find it on Google. You're talking about you can't move forward because of what happened to you in the past. You're right. You can't move forward because of what happened to you in the past. Because you're still right there. You're still stuck. That's why you soft. Because you keep looking back. But when you stop looking back and start looking forward, all of a sudden you see opportunity. But also with opportunities comes fear. You know why you keep looking back? Because you're afraid to try. Because you might fail. But if I look back and something happens to me, guess who's fault it is? What I was looking at. If I'm not successful, it ain't because I ain't trying hard enough. It's because they didn't help me. Y'all know I like the story. If you see me fighting the bear, don't help me. Help the bear. Because I'm going to fight. That's how I live my life. Don't help me. He needs your help. Because I'm going to kill him. I ain't gonna be coming. Oh my God, the bear! Somebody help! No, no, no! Don't, don't, don't! Matter of fact, help him. I ain't running. I ain't none of it. Ain't no holding me, bro. Me and him finna go right now. What's up? We live our lives stuck and mad at other folks. And we suck. And now you wonder why when your folk come around you, they don't wanna be around you. Cause when you start talking, you start talking about. That stuff. All these complaints and all these things that didn't go right. Man, forget all the stuff that didn't go right. I can't fix it. I can't change it. What am I going to do today? See, when we're stuck in the past, time has three different segments, right? You got the past, the present, and the future, right? The past behind you. It's History. The future. It's in front of you. It's a mystery. The present. What we have right now is called the present because that's God's gift to you. What you gonna do with the gift? You can't enjoy the gift stuck in history. You can't enjoy the gift trying to figure out the mystery. Why don't you just enjoy the gift? We so caught up on what happened to us. We so caught up on what we got to do tomorrow, and you ain't handling your business today. What you doing right now? Though? Yeah. If your daddy wasn't there for you then, are you there for your kids now? Right now. If your mama wasn't there for you then, are you there for your kids now? Because you can't worry about then or tomorrow. What you doing now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they, they, I was abused as a child. Why, wow, that is tragic. And we shouldn't overlook that. That can't be the bang of your existence. Yeah. <laughs> trust me, I had issues when I was a kid too. Put me in situations to do stuff I don't understand. But instead of me using this as an excuse, I tried to find a way to help myself grow from the pain and use the pain as fuel. The past is history. Future is a mystery. That let us make sure we enjoy this present. Why are you so soft? Because you're stuck. The only person can unstick you is you. Can't nobody pull you out of a place you don't want to leave. That makes sense? Y'all ever had a, a puppy or a kitten works, a kitten, and the kitten gets afraid and it runs under the house. 
And you got to get the kidney. It's close enough you can grab with your hand. But you really can't see what you're reaching. You got to reach in there and hope you grab him and snatch him up out of the back of his neck. But he's scared. I don't know if you ever had a cat. And it got scared. When you put your hand there to reach for him, what do you think you're going to do? Mine. You trying to save it. Every time you, yeah. Like I'm trying to save you, fool. That's how some of y'all act right now. We're trying to help you. Come out of your path. There it go. You can be great. Stop fighting your help, man. You don't, you don't remember nothing when you get home there. Remember this. So when people talk to you, and, and we got to be better friends. We got to be better. We got to help people when they stuck. So hold on. Yeah, that happened, but what you going to do? You know what's so funny? When you say that to your friend, they'll stop talking. And they might stop talking to you. That means because they wasn't your real friend. We have to learn how to challenge each other to be better. It's easy to do it in sport. It's hard to do it in life. Because we don't want folks to know our business. Know this, ladies and gentlemen. Ain't nobody got a perfect life. Stop doing the stuff they did to you in kindergarten. Mess you up for your life. Them Disney movies. Y'all hear me? I talk about it all the time. And they live. That's a damn lie. Ain't nobody ever lived happily ever after. It's impossible to live happily ever after. Because something will always go wrong. You do know when you get older, your body starts to do strange things. I'm going to live happily ever after, but now when I get 55, I start getting some weight. Now I get 60, my knees start to buckle. Then I get the gouch. I'm going to be happily ever after with the gouch. I can't even got the bed good, but I'm happily ever after. Come on, man. Stop it. You're going to eat some bad food every now and again. That ain't happy. You're going to get a cold. You're going to get the flu. You ain't happy when you sick. Don't let them folks that did. See, and see, the thing is, the, me being talking about being stuck in the past. Y'all thought I was talking about the problem you had. And all this some bad habits, too. Y'all do know that, as I said all the time, I'm going to say it again. This is not being nasty, being real. Raise your hand if you will pee on yourself. On purpose. On purpose. On purpose. Right? You, say, you know what? I don't feel like going to the bathroom. I'm going to pee right here. In your clothes. I'm just pee. I'm going to just go. It, ain't, it don't hurt you. Peeing in your clothes causes you no pain. But you know why you won't pee on yourself? Because when you was a kid and peed on yourself, you got a whoop. And your mama told you before you could talk, you don't pee on yourself. The mama told you before you could walk, you don't pee on yourself. I'm not encouraging, but my point is, you don't do it because it was embedded in you before you could even talk. And you were holding on to that because it was embedded in you, but it's a positive thing. But see, we hold it on to other things that aren't positive. Just like you won't pee on yourself, you can't heal. Because you stuck on the fact, grandma said this when I was, my uncle called me ugly when I was three. So she called me ugly. I look in the mirror and see ugly. That's a real thing. You have to learn how to heal from that. Because it's like it stays with you. You got to figure out, my mama, before she passed, God rest her soul, couldn't move no more. She couldn't get up and go to the bathroom. So she had to learn how to accept the fact she had to pee on herself. And then it had to wait on us to change it. Can you imagine what must have felt like for her to lay there and know she cannot physically go to the bathroom and say, you know what, I know I'm not supposed to do this, but I'm going to pee on myself and have to wait on some help. I can't even imagine the mental turmoil that she had to go through to be in that situation. Because you got to accept some stuff to do that. You had to accept you can't go to the back. And I know the first time she did it, she held it until she just couldn't hold it no more. So we have to learn how we got to do it. It's going to hurt the first time when you try to heal. 
But you got to keep doing it until you heal. Because when you start to heal, then you can grow. Because the goal is to get better every day. And we cannot get better looking backwards. You cannot grow looking backwards. The Olympics is about to start. And one of the things they teach sprinters is when you are sprinting, you never look to your right or to your left. You only look at the goal. You look at the tape. You run to the tape, and then you run through the tape. Because it don't matter looking right or left how fast they're going. You have to run as fast as you can. Looking over there, don't slow them down. Looking over there, going to make you speed up. You just run as fast as you can and pray you can be faster than them. Because the minute you look to the right, to the left, you go to the left. You show them now look back. Now you're going to fall. You know how you move? I'm talking a lot, but I'm going to stop. You know how you lead a horse? You grab the mane or you grab the bridle and you turn his head. And wherever the horse's head goes, the body will follow. If you're looking back, even if you're not going backwards, you are not going forward. My challenge for you today is to grow and move forward. Grow and move forward. That takes some healing. That takes some self-evaluation. That takes getting some friends that you can have an honest conversation about. With, and ain't going to judge you. Ain't going to hold it against you later when they get mad. See, y'all be telling me y'all been to the wrong people. Y'all got folks as leeches. You tell them your business, and the minute they get mad at you, they want to talk about you behind your back. Those some suckers. Don't talk to suckers. You just some real friends. Folks that are challenge you too. And I ain't talking about, nigga, you know you crazy? Hey, you know, you, uh, why? You, you know, have you ever considered? In a situation like that, I would. I can't tell you what to do, but when I happen to have it, I've been married this woman for a long time. We've been together over 20 years. I've been talking about that night. I've been in a long time. Oof, since 1900s. No, 2000. Yeah. 2002. Close enough to a long time. Jesus Christ, that's 22 years, man. You think a 22 years shame made me mad? She did that one time. You know, it was simple, Ernest. She didn't make the bed. We got the bed. Her job is to make the bed. So she knows. So if I go in the bathroom and brush my teeth, when I go in the bathroom, I expect the bed to be made. So I'm going to come out of the bathroom with my pants from the closet to lay them on the bed so I can get dressed. I can't lay my clothes on the bed to get dressed. If the bed is a lie. So, when I go in the bathroom and come out after brushing my teeth, what I expect? Bed to be made. And I talk about it. We ain't got to discuss it. She know she's supposed to make the bed up. I'm going to leave the toilet seat down. Evil swap ain't no swamp. So, if I come out in the bed ain't made, we got to have a conversation. Hey, but, uh, I ain't got to say nothing. I didn't look at it. She already know. Oh, my dad. And she make the bed up. Ain't no argument. No. Now I could be like, now you know I told you every time. So what? We're going to be in the house tomorrow. <laughs> to my couples, my married people, oh my, my married people on Facebook. You finna be married forever, right? Stop making stuff that ain't important important. I'm going to be with you tomorrow. So why I'm mad about this now, knowing I got to look at you in a few minutes. I, you know what? It ain't worth it. It ain't even worth it. It, 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 it ain't even worth it. <laughs> Arguing over nothing. I found it really ain't nothing that important. Now, if we're going to get to the point of a breakup, I'm going to you have everything. And this, and, 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 and that too, and that too. But if we're going to be here in a minute in the morning, I, I like peace. I love peace. Peace sometimes means it's taking something. You know, I'm like, you know what? You, you right. They can be wrong with two left shoes. I find an earnings that they're wrong. They'll figure it out on their own. I ain't got to tell them they're wrong. But then if I don't, if I tell them wrong, they're going to do what they can to prove that I'm wrong. Then we're going to both be like, man, you need to go through all this. Just add some flour next time. Man, you got to put the chicken in the flour first. They're going to work that if you just... <laughs> When they're talking about the flower, like, ah, put it in the flower. You know what? Don't put it in the flower. We'll eat it, we'll eat it how it come out. <laughs> when it come out, it don't look right. Uh, maybe because you ain't putting no flower in it. I told you. Google it. Okay. Uh. Look, ladies and gentlemen, my, my, my prayer is, though, for real, on a serious note, we got to start healing. 
I'm finally now into the place I'm dealing because I have to ask, I had to stop. When I got the new job, my workload reduced. What I was doing is masking my pain by trying to work too much. That wasn't me. So I did it with myself. I'm helping other people with their problems. Now in my new role, I don't help nobody with problems. I manage people. But now I got all the time to think about me. Oh my God, that's so hard. Oh, it's so hard. I cry sometimes for no reason. It's cool. I'll be in the car riding. What is wrong with me? I don't even know I'm healing. It's okay. I'm healed. And then when I realized what it was, I try to fix it. Now, okay, now I'm gonna do, I'm not, okay, good. I'm better. I'm better. Great. And then the, before you know it, you start to feel better about life. We come every Sunday together to learn how to be together better. We got to start talking to each other more. I'm, I'm the pastor of the church. If you tell me something, I can't, I can't even tell her. I wouldn't know what. I got a hand at the hole that because you got to be able to get it off somewhere in a safe space. I'm better than take the deposit box, baby, because ain't no key to me. You lose the key to take the deposit box, somebody get that junk. You can't, I, 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 I ain't telling you, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, I ain't, I. Joe who? Mr. Boxer who? <laughs> who? Who? I'm about it. I love y'all, for real. And I pray you love me back. If you don't, that's okay. I'm going to love you anyway. Uh, hopefully you get to the point where you love me back. Let us make sure when we leave here today that we vote on this Independence Weekend and, and, and learn how to live free. Learn how to live free from the past. Free from the pain of the past. Because it's painful that you are alone because you are still here. God left you here for a reason. Walk in his purpose. Allow him to guide you and direct you. Use your pain to be what you, the other people use to heal. But we can't do that if you're afraid of it or ashamed of it. You ain't got nothing to be ashamed of. Whatever happened then happened. You can't change it. Even if you the one did, you can't change it. Accept it. Let's move forward. Amen? Amen. Yeah, let's move forward. Hold on. Hold on. I got an idea. I got to move back to my life. Let us stand with you and you in for communion.